Your discretion is advised. Hello and welcome. I'm Mr. Scary. Imagine being so hated that you were murdered in front of 30 to 45 different people, but no one's seen a thing. Not one person. This is the way the life of Kim McElroy's ended on the morning of July 10th, 1981. His unsolved killing became the focus of international attention. That remains unsolved to this day. Ken McElroy was born on June 1st, 1934. He was the 15th of 16 children. He was born to poor migrant tenant farmer couple named Tony and Mabel McElroy. How do you have 16 kids when you're poor, and why? When he was young, Ken fell off a hay wagon and banged his head. This injury was so severe that a steel plate had to be surgically implanted into his head. At the time, nobody could have anticipated how this would affect him and his personality in years to come. School wasn't for McElroy. He dropped out of school at the age of 15 in the 8th grade. He passed his time as a raccoon hunter, cattle rustler, small-time thief and womanizer. As he got older, Ken McElroy began to develop a reputation over the course of his life and it wasn't a good one. He became known as a bully. If you talk back to him, there was a very good chance that he would draw the gun that was forever by his side and threaten you with it. Ken McElroy lived in Skidboard, Missouri. He had free reign over everyone and everything. If he wanted anything, he was prepared to help himself with no questions asked, a trait that his kids would later pick up. McElroy loved women. This notorious womanizer ended up with more than 10 children of his own, with different women. A lot of these women were still children themselves. In 1971, the town bully met a girl named Trina McLeod. At the time, she was 12 years of age. And by the time she was 14, she was pregnant. McElroy was soon facing charges of domestic violence and also faced molestation charges. But McElroy had a good lawyer, and there was a loophole in the law. If Trina McElroy got married, she wouldn't be able to testify and give evidence against him. So McElroy divorced his wife. Yes, he was still married when he impregnated the 14-year-old girl, and then married the young Trina McLeod. They both then went back and lived with his ex-wife the one he had just divorced. Shortly after, the young Trina, now McElroy, gave birth. She made a bid to escape a violent husband and ended up at her parents' place with a newborn baby boy. But it didn't take long for McElroy to find her. He dragged her and the baby back to his house. He then returned to the McLeod's home and shot the family dog. He then burned down their house and sat there while smoking a cigarette. He was suspected of being involved in the theft of grain, gasoline, alcohol, antiques, and livestock. Also child molestation, statutory rape, and arson. The charges were brought against him. 21 times a witnesses refused to testify because he would intimidate them by following them around the town or parking outside their homes and watching them. One day, one of Ken McElroy's daughters went to the local grocery store owned by 7-year-old Ernest Bo Bowenkamp and stole some candy and got caught. Bowenkamp severely chastised the child and threw her out. Talk about the apple not falling far from the tree. The daughter then told her father what happened and McElroy became enraged. He went down to the grocery store and confronted the old grocer. It became so heated that McElroy left the store, went to his truck and grabbed a shotgun. He went back into the store, leveled the shotgun at the Bowen Camp's head and pulled the trigger. Bowen Camp was hit in the neck and almost died at the scene. Ken McElroy was soon arrested and charged with attempted murder. Ken McElroy was convicted of the crime but released on an appeal. And like a fox back to his old tricks, 
McElroy began harassing and threatening the old grocer, even his friends, even the town minister. He said he was going to go see their beloved grocery store owner, Ernest Bowen Camp, and finish the job. Townsfolk went to the sheriff's office and even City Hall. They wanted protection. They were told to start a neighborhood watch of all things. Well, the town folks had had enough. Something had to be done. On June 10, 1981, a lot of these fed up folks were at the local watering hole called the D&G. They were having a few drinks and talking about the injustice of it all, and guess who walked in? That's right, Mr. Untouchable himself, Ken McElroy. He stayed for a few drinks while his wife waited in the truck. He then bought a six pack of beer and left, but he didn't leave alone. The whole bar followed him, roughly 30 to 45 people, and surrounded his truck. Two men pulled out the rifles, while his wife sat in the passenger seat. Two men had their sights on McElroy. Two shots rang out, both hitting Ken McElroy, almost killing him instantly. They then quietly packed up the rifles, and not one person called the police. Not one person called an ambulance. Not one person who witnessed the shooting did a thing. They all just simply walked away. Justice had been served. Even though everyone detested McElroy, an investigation still ensued. Ballistics proved that there were two gunmen. The sheriff's investigated but to no avail. The case went cold and to this day it still remains an unsolved murder. Trina McElroy tried suing the town for six million for wrongful death of her husband. They settled out of court for $17,600. And to this day some people in Skidmore, Missouri close their eyes at night, hear those two shots, smile, and sleep like a baby. Welcome to my channel. This is Mr. Scary. 